Welcome to the Crypto Mises podcast, the official podcast of the Satoshi Nakamoto Institute. I'm Michael Goldstein. I'm Daniel Krawitz. And today we're going to be talking about malinvestment. Which there has been a lot of recently. So in the past couple of years, Bitcoin has started to go mainstream. And it's it started to become a, a hot topic. But um, it seems like a lot of the hype surrounding Bitcoin... Um, doesn't doesn't really seem to understand what what's good about Bitcoin and where the value proposition is. It seems like there's hype about Bitcoin, but people aren't quite sure why. And there's been a, a, a lot of investment opportunities that have become available in the Bitcoin world that uh, don't don't necessarily make a lot of sense. And we've been seeing a lot of this malinvestment working its way out of the system recently with the, the price declines. Right. So, uh, of course, a, a malinvestment would be um, when people are investing in a structure of production that maybe does not warrant as much investment as it's receiving. Uh, we see this often in business cycles when you have um, credit expansions. Right. It, it just means it means that people are investing based on hype rather than on a rational appraisal of the r real future prospects of a good. And um, a, a big warning sign for this sort of thing is when people can start making businesses that all they do is sell investments to other people. In, in other words, they're not producing things that people actually want and that or, or that are for producing other things that are actually useful. They're just making it easier for more and more people to invest in something. Um, and we've seen lots of that in Bitcoin. Right. And then any, any defense of a lot of these investments um, requires not paying attention to economic reality and economic theory and what that can inform us about the future of those investments. Um, and I think, I think altcoins have been uh, one of the greatest examples of this, because for a long time we've been talking about the um, economic inviability of uh, having competing currencies when you have one that has a clear dominant network effect and the fact that markets will tend towards a single currency. And yet people um, still hold on to this notion that they should use things like Litecoin as an investment vehicle. Um, and of course we've we've been bashing that quite a bit for uh, two years now. Um, and we're even seeing Litecoin crash. And of course, Bitcoin has been crashing quite a bit as well. But Litecoin has um, been suffering way greater than Bitcoin has compared to both the dollar and Bitcoin itself. Well, there's there's been plenty of overinvestment in Bitcoin too, it seems. Um, but um, one one of the most important things you can do if you're starting a startup or you know, trying to create a business is ruling out bad ideas. And you want to think about ideas really carefully before you do anything to try to find anything that might be wrong on it. Because labor is scarce, especially especially uh, entrepreneurial labor, like building actual new things. Very, very scarce resource. You don't want to waste it building a stupid idea. Um... And it's extremely important when you're an investor to uh, investigate your your um, what you might potentially buy to investigate these very carefully to look for anything that might go wrong. Um, there is nothing. There's nothing like this in the altcoin world, or there was there was never anything like this. It was all just create the altcoins as quickly as possible trying to push them off on investors who don't know what they're doing, um, pump and dump, um, build up as much hype as possible. And anytime you try to argue with these people and you say that their idea doesn't make any sense, they're like, well, what are you, against competition? Um, you just hate innovation. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we hate innovation. And um, right when when really what we are trying to do is approach this um, with an economic mindset and think about um, how competing currencies actually um, 
at work? How 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 they work together? How how they compete with one another? What make makes sense? When you create an investment, you need to justify to me that I should buy it. Yeah. You you can't you can't just shoot down my uh, my skepticism. Were you a doubting Thomas? You know, they, it's just an experiment, right? That's a that's a very common uh, a very common meta argument you'll hear is um, um, this is just an experiment. Let's see how the market plays out. When if if you understand economics and you understand the the types of investment at hand, you can already have a very good understanding of how the market will play out, and thus you can use that to. Um, like uh, keep yourself from investing. In Experiments are costly. I mean, especially when you're dealing with other people's money. So, and, and of course, this is true with real experiments in science too. You want to rule out experiments that you don't need to do, and you want to do that beforehand before you do anything. So, you know, somebody says, "Why don't Why don't we stick our hand in the wood shepherd to see what happens?" That's an experiment. You, you know, you want to say, "Well, I think I think that." The, it might have bad consequences. I think we can we can figure that out uh, without trying it. Well, that's good if we can figure out what the consequences are without trying it. So um, it, it's not it's it is not valid at all to uh, dismiss um, dismiss people's skepticism. Um, it is just an experiment. You need to prove that it's a good experiment to be trying. Yeah, and all, all resources are scarce, and we need to put them towards the most useful sorts of things. Yeah. Now, I, I'd say um, one of the big issues with this, it's just an experiment, let the market play out um, mindsets, is that um, it ends up, it, it has ended up making the Bitcoin uh, culture rather toxic and accepting of scammers. Completely. Um there, there's there's a terrible uh, lack of, of best practices and acceptable business practices in Bitcoin. Not to say that there aren't some really excellent businesses in Bitcoin, but overall, as a general rule, um, when you get into the, the Bitcoin world, most of the stuff being sold is crap. And if you want to get money from somebody, for example, to put on a commercial or something, you're, you're going to have to accept um, really silly ideas. Right. And, and people, people will hear an idea and think, oh, well, this is all just an experiment. Let me put money towards it. And they just kind of they give out money almost on a whim. I remember at a, at a meetup, and I, you, I think you were there as well, I heard, I heard someone say uh, or ask, uh, has anyone heard of SwarmCoin? I just invested a bunch of money in it. Yeah, I I was, I wanted to bang my head into the wall. I, I mean, I remember when when I went to um, Inside Bitcoins in Las Vegas, it was just kind of shocking to me to see Butterfly Labs and Mountain Gox at the uh, the sponsor room yeah. being treated like like, like they're a, a legitimate entity. Exactly. Like <laughs> how, how how can you how can if you're putting on a conference. How, how can how can it be responsible at all to accept money from these people and let them put up a booth that makes it look like they're a legitimate business? I mean, we we all knew that they were scam companies for a long time, and it's crazy to treat them like upstanding citizens. Um, so talking to Litecoiners is just the worst experience. And I'm so glad that Litecoin is rapidly dying. Um, it, it was really... It, it's like talking to creationists. And they're, they're, not, they're not interested in justifying what, what they're doing in any way. They, you know, they make, they make claims and they don't have any ability to justify them. So one of the, the biggest ones for Litecoin was... Litecoin is more distributed than Bitcoin. Well, first off, I I don't see how that's been defined at all. I don't see what 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 that even means, um, and how you would test this claim. And I don't see that there's any proof of this at all. And when you point this out, uh, they you know they just call you a noob. Um, so anyway, I'm really glad those people are 
are out. Well, th- this brings up another point of um, the problem with buzzwords um, in the Bitcoin community because people people throw around words like distributed. They throw around words like decentralized and centralized um, without clear uh, definitions of what they actually mean and how we can classify things as one or the other. Or, or good reasons for why something should be decentralized or distributed or whatever. Right. So, for instance, uh, decentralization isn't the end in of itself. It's it's a means towards some end. Um, for, for us, we want Bitcoin to be decentralized because having a decentralized money allows us to have this ledger that is without counterparty risk. Yeah, and, and it... And of course, it makes Bitcoin very difficult to corrupt, since there's no there's no institution to corrupt, um, except the Bitcoin Foundation. But uh, but I, I think Cody Wilson's working on that. So. Yes, right. Um, so altcoins are are one example of a, uh, a they're one kind of malinvestment in in Bitcoin that we've seen working working its way through recently. Um, but there, there are quite a few other things. Um, so, um, well, next I'd like to mention mining. Um, so mining, buying a mining rig, that's kind of a leveraged play on Bitcoin. So there are circumstances in which that does make sense, um, especially in 2009 and 10, uh, you, you... Investing in mining makes you a genius, but once once Bitcoin starts getting some hype, then it becomes a, a much much riskier proposition to become a miner. And um, lots of people didn't understand where where the risks were, since it is quite a technical uh, field to 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 build these mining rigs. It, th- there were there were a lot of, of shady companies building these mining rigs and and then selling them to people without any real evidence that they could deliver the, on their promises and they didn't. Um, yeah. So uh, my favorite example was in the documentary "The Rise and Rise of Bitcoin." Uh, one of the one of the main characters of the documentary uh, decided to buy mining equipment from Butterfly Labs and he dropped. Uh, 2,700 Bitcoins on some mining equipment, I believe in 2012, and uh, the equipment never came. I don't think it's going to come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the amount of money he lost out on um, through that uh, purchase uh, was just immense, uh, and unfortunately, over time, we can expect uh, the opportunity cost to be growing and growing. So they say that um, the investment world runs on greed and fear. So when some company that can't prove that it even exists starts advertising for products that are going to make you hundreds of dollars a day... Um, well, it's a pretty good experiment. I might, yeah, might want to go try it. They're, they're playing off greed. Uh, but when you think about how, how many things could go wrong with this, how... How rapidly the mining rate is going up, and how how likely they are to be a scam company. Just given what we know about Bitcoin companies, um, and and the the low level of proof that that people require around here. The um, yeah, it's a, it's a good reminder that that Bitcoin itself is trustless, but other Bitcoiners are not. Yes, yes, everyone's a scammer, right? Um, so we saw a lot of, um, a lot of people buy these mining rigs and lose a bunch of money on them. And we saw quite a lot of, quite a lot of illegitimate businesses, uh, building them and treating their customers terribly because they can, they can get away with it. Yeah. And it- the most terrifying thing really is this model of you pay it up front then we'll deliver you the mining rig when we feel like it. I yeah, guess. especially considering if you're holding on to the ASIC, why would I want to give it up to the consumer who just who bought it from me? Why not just hold on to it and do some more testing and see if it, if it's mining well? This is 
yeah, this this is when you should start feeling really scared when you read something like that. Um, well, what I mean to say is, it's it's in the company's interest to just be holding. There's no if if mining is profitable, there's no reason for a company to be wanting to give up the product to the customer in the first place. Yeah, and we know that Butterfly Labs are doing just that, and not just them. Uh, most of the other companies too. So, uh, in addition to um, the mining malinvestment, we've also seen a lot of startups. And now, startups are, um, they're a little bit different because Bitcoin does need companies. And some of the startups that exist now, I expect, will be viable and turn into great companies eventually. So, we're talking about a, a much higher level than mining and altcoins. Um, but there's still malinvestment in startups because um, Bitcoin doesn't need that many startups. There are really only a few services that Bitcoin requires, and there just isn't, isn't that much room for that many companies. Even if Bitcoin grows a lot, you still don't really need that many payment processors. We do need payment processors, probably not all that many. Uh, same with exchanges and um, mining pools. And um, uh, these are all things that we need. It's not really clear that we need as many companies doing these things as presently exist. And of course, there were many Bitcoin companies that were just out, outright scams. Um, example being uh, Made Safe and uh, Atlantis Market. That was a really good example. Bitcoin Savings and Trust. Yes. Um, and, and of course, there have been some really fantastic Bitcoin businesses. They have Repeat. actual viable ideas that can generate revenue and are sustainable. And, and so... So uh, my favorite examples are Silk Road and Satoshi Dice. Those are great companies. Uh, Silk Road doesn't exist anymore, but it's not their fault. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, um, there's kind of a, um, a dysfunctional relationship between venture capitalists and startups. Um, and, and both of them kind of have an incentive to um, scam one another under different circumstances. So you can build a company and your only point, your only purpose is to sell it to a VCs and then jump out. So you don't necessarily have to be thinking about making a real viable company to do that. And the, the venture capitalist for his part also doesn't necessarily want that because they can just sell, they can just pawn the company off later on anyway, if they can build enough hype. So the, the venture capitalist will, um, trying to generate as much growth for the, the company as possible, even if that's not really building a sustainable base for that company. In, in investment, it really is a let the buyer beware. Um, one, of the, one of the problems with, with Bitcoin startups is it's, it, it's a very risky proposition to expect any particular startup to do better than Bitcoin itself. Right. And really the same with any any other kind of investment in the Bitcoin world. Now, if you had invested in um, Satoshi Dice when it began, that would have been a fantastic idea. But for the most part, th there's kind of a problem, which is that um, how does a Bitcoin company grow faster than Bitcoin? And furthermore, um, a, a Bitcoin company is always more likely to fail than Bitcoin is uh, because Bitcoin doesn't need any particular startup. It needs some startups, but it's not wedded to any one at any time ever. Um, so startups are more risky than Bitcoin and uh, there's typically less of a growth proposition. Unfortunately, venture capitalists are not allowed to buy currencies. Um, so this, this brings us, well, and of course, th these ideas are um, 
I wrote about them in my article called The Correct Strategy of Bitcoin Entrepreneurship. So in order to, um, to uh, provide a better opportunity for venture capitalists, we've come up with a startup idea. Right. So uh, our startup idea, I guess we can pitch it here. Yes. Is... This idea is real, by the way. We will absolutely take your money for it. Yeah, so uh, especially you guys at Andreessen Horowitz, um, what you can do is give us millions of dollars. We will take the millions of dollars and buy up millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, and then we will hold the Bitcoin and continue to hold it until they're worth millions of dollars each, and then we can give you some of the profit. The only expense of this company is a small stipend for each of us, and that's it. What what's the name of the company? Uh, I guess we can call it Krowitz and Goldstein Holdings. Yes, or Hodlings. Yes, Krowitz and Bitstein Hodlings, and we have a great slogan. The slogan is, "We don't do anything." Um, so I hope you like this idea. Um, send us send us money. Um, we're a great investment. Um, Give, give us your, your Bitcoins. They're going to be worthless pretty soon anyway, right? So might as well. Yeah, so start up, cash in, sell out, bro down.